But anyway, thanks again. Uh, the, the, you'd be surprised how much this does for the uh, family to see this great outcome of love uh, for their special loved one himself. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercy. We thank you most of all today for sharing Noni with this community. What a delight she has been. What an inspiration she has been to us. We thank you for sharing her with us. Lord, we accept your word says that uh, all good and perfect gifts come from the Father of lights. And Lord, we accept this gift of knowing from you. And what a wonderful gift it's been. And Father, I pray that you would help us today and remove through this time. That it would not only bring honor to Noni, but it would bring honor to you. We ask especially though know, that you would send your spirit that you said would be our comforter to comfort the family, that you would hold them close to yourself today, that they would feel your presence during this time. We just commit them into your care, into your safety, and we do it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Noni Marie Stuckey was born on January 18, 1964, in Olympia, Washington, to Dan and Cheryl Stuckey. She was the youngest of four children. She was raised in the Olympia area. She graduated from Tumwater High School and went on to obtain a bachelor's degree from Western Washington University and a master's degree from Oregon State University. Her first teaching job was in Lakeview and started in 1986. She married Dave Vandenberg in Olympia on August the 12th, 1989. They had two children, Lacey and Grady. The family moved to Lakeview in 1994. Noni was a stay-at-home mom until she returned to work at Daly Middle School and Lakeview High School in 2009. She became a proud grandmother of twin boys in 2015. And I think their birthday is tomorrow, to be a year old. And when that happened, she adopted the name Nanny. And Nanny is a mashup of Nana and Granny, which started as a joke but ended up sticking. Noni is survived by her husband Dave, daughter. Lacey and husband Caleb, son Grady, their grandsons Hale and Isaiah, father Dan Stuckey, and mother Cheryl Wilson, her brother Mark and wife Jan, her sister Anne and husband Paul, brother Dave and wife Francie, as well as several nieces and nephews. And uh, may I add, by looking more friends than you can count. Each one of you is here because in your own way you love Nani. And she impacted your life in some special way. No one can love her like you loved her. Because no one knew her like you knew her. We share our stories, our memories to help each of us love her more. But there is simply not enough time for everyone to share their memories and their love for Moni right now. But there will be a time later gathered around the tables in the cafeteria for us to share our stories. So I would invite you as you uh, hear how each person who speaks today loved her, that you would think of how you loved her and be ready to share your heart with those around the table. There are some specific people. There's a small group of ladies that uh, know he was part of a Bible study and a running club. And they shared journey together. And I would they have words to say to share their love. And I'll invite them now. 
Our friend Heidi Albertson couldn't be with us today, but she left some words that she wanted us to say. But it has a lot of big math words in it, so you guys might need to sit here. Okay. My favorite tonight with Penelope were when we could exercise and talk about math. She was always up for any adventure. The more difficult, the better. She loved to run, hike, or bike up any hill, and she'd be talking the entire time. Most of the time, I could hardly hear what she was saying because I was breathing too hard. June 19th was my last day of exercise in Noni. She graciously walked while I waddled my way up Bullard Canyon. I was 36 weeks pregnant with our daughter, Anna. I had taken a fabulous education class that week before on how to teach middle school math and was stoked to share my ideas with her. Noni had the biggest, most beautiful smile especially when talking about Dave, her kids, grandbabies, or teaching math. I will never forget how excited she was the day to talk about the more effective ways to teach rates, ratios, proportions, and multiplying binomials. Thank you. Melody <laughs> loved her students and devoted countless hours to their education. Most days she was at school between 6 and 7 and didn't leave until 4 or 5, which meant that the majority of her prep was early in the morning, late at night, or on the weekends. That was because students generally were in her classroom for help or to share a story between 7 and 4. She rarely spared a minute of lunch for herself, instead helping kids with homework for any class, not just math, or helping students just get caught up. She genuinely believed that all kids could succeed and work tirelessly to reach our most difficult students. She always looked forward to conferences out of town, mostly because she loved to perfect her teaching, but she also thoroughly enjoyed trying new restaurants and eating good food, especially desserts. We shared so many car rides and hotel rooms, calling ourselves the Shannon McCall Groupies. That's a math person. As we attended, as we attended curriculum conferences where she was the presenter, I cherished our car ride conversations because of her love and passion for her family. I've only met her mom, dad, brothers, and sister-in-laws a couple of times, but felt like I could have been best friends with them too. I'm learning too many things. I've been learning so many things from this amazing woman, but I will share just one more. Years ago, I asked her what I needed to do to develop the same incredible relationships with my kids that she has with hers. She said, it was easy. You love them. Greet them at the door every day and share milk and cookies after school. Forget the cleaning and organizing and spend time Whatever it is you do, do with love. She loved to play with dogs, cook, read, sew, or do just about anything with Lacey and Brady. One time, Lacey and Noni invited us over for homemade veggie burgers and sangria. Lacey graciously ate, but not without telling her how much better a beef burger would be after every bite. Her relationships with her friends and family were amazing. There's a few more words um, from Nicole Muller. She said, when I think of Noni, the first thing I think of is her bubbly smile. I always think of her greeting you every time with that smile. The second thing I think of is the first time I hiked with her. I remember her when I was a kid from swim team. She was the stroke and turn judge. I always thought she was a sweet, quiet, gentle lady. But years later, when she said we were going to go on a hike, I imagined it was going to be slow, nice, and leisurely hike. Little did I know, we would practically run up to the top and back down. It didn't take that long for me to realize she's a very tough, strong, inspiring woman. That's who Noni was. So I um, will remember a few um, things about me. Um, the five days running date, everyone in the middle of the if you're five minutes late, you did not get to go. The first one to call to call and say you're late, just so you get to go. Um, the early mornings running through town with three layers on, only with her eyes and mouth open because we were running in the negative seven degree weather. We were the crazy long girls and Noni was all about the challenge. Um, and there is probably a 
picture floating around as a mission track as well, but it's quite impressive. Um, most software, um, these rights that I shared with Tony and Google Maps would never really adopt the ride. It's just to help me get out of bed and knowing that I would meet the friends um, at Nomi's house every morning that made all the difference. And then something happened every day in that run that um, would set the day right and we would be off on a run and then off to run to whatever direction all of us had to do that day. And I was blessed and fortunate to spend two years doing that with me. How about the Urban Coffee Shop Lots? You said we were running, but we really just ran to the coffee shop. <laughs> um, and how about the um, early morning runs, the fresh snow on the ground? We were the first tracks out in town. We were with our dog, we had a healthy stream of compensation, and it was the best of times. Um, someday I hope to run the game with you. I hope there is no wind. There is no wind on the sideways. Or the random on the face. I hope that we have a calm, peaceful morning with a heavy, a heavy stream of conversation about my own sensitivity. I will listen. mornings hiking with Noni and the dogs, as she led the way. We had some of the best conversations about our families. And I'll never forget the day we hiked the trail of Black Cat, me barely keeping up with her. As we approached the top, I knew she had something exciting to tell me. Her face lit up with joy. Lacey was pregnant with twins. Noni was going to be a grandma. She was ecstatic. She could hardly wait to start sewing the twins' clothes. Noni loved her children, Lacey, Lacey's husband Caleb, her son Grady, husband Dave, and grandsons Hale and Isaiah so deeply. She was so proud of her family. I will miss our hikes, bike rides, and coffee beans. But mostly I will miss her because my and her voice. So it's not really in my nature to not be sarcastic and funny. So here you go. <laughs> no need I have been on many adventures. Um, our adventures always involve exercise, hiking, biking, walking, running. You always had to be moving. <coughs> When we first started riding bikes, we stayed close to home, we stayed in the valley, we ride 10 to 20 miles. Then Noni got this great idea, let's ride the dog lake. We'd even heard of people riding at Paisley, via Dairy Creek, but that's a whole other story. Dog lake. We left early, I ate a banana and took a power bar. Noni is a camel, she didn't need food or water to live in this desert. <laughs> Over me. <laughs> we have a joke in our group 
about all these white trash dog breeds. We have so many dogs that sometimes there are two dogs for every person in our group, in our hikes or runs or whatever. Uh, I attribute this abundance of dogs to Bree, he actually is. I'm pretty sure he thinks that his mom and dad should have had a dog shelter. <laughs> this summer on our walks, Noni and I had seven dogs. Me, Noni, my baby girl, and seven dogs. Chase, Remy, Rookie, Sassy, Hank, Nellie, and Jen. <laughs> trying, to, trying to round up a baby shoulder and seven dogs with a car coming? It's lucky that people on Tom's Creek know what we're about and slow down as soon as they see us. We would yell for the dogs, come on dogs! I would call mine, Chase, Remy, Rookie, heel! Noni would drive Sassy and call for Jim, he stayed pretty close to being a puppy. She would yell for her Nellie and Hank, come on Nellie, come on Hank! Hank, come! Hank! Pretty soon it was, hey, come up! In the white trash dog voice, which never, which you never expected from our sweet friend Nellie. But it always did a trick and it made me laugh. And it reminded me that she was tough and strong and nobody got away with anything with Nellie. Nellie's perfect day included three things. Exercise, riding her bike, and lifting weights, and yoga. She was competitive and tough. On one of our rides this summer, I told Noni, if you told me jumping off a bridge would make me mentally stronger and physically stronger, I would hold your hand on the way down. And she just smiled at me and said, I feel the same way about you. She was a true friend. She loved her family, she loved her friends, she loved her students, she loved all of her teacher friends. She loved life. She cherished every moment, and there was always a smile on her face. No name for I guarantee when I say that name, you see a smile. You hear an encouraging word, or you think of a time she pushed you beyond your limits. Noni entered my life 17 years ago when we moved to Lakeview. My neighbor, Joe Harlan, had just had me over and asked me, what are some things you like to do? As soon as I said run, she said, I, I introduce you to Noni. At that time, I did not realize God was answering my prayers with her friendship. I prayed before we moved for people to run with and to help me with the transition from being a full-time teacher to a stay-at-home mom. I'll never forget the first day I met her. She was standing there in her overalls as we were dropping off Jesse and Grady at preschool. She said, I heard you like to run. Let's meet at BMS at 5 a.m. and we can do a short run. I said, 5 a.m.? Why so early? <laughs> that way, it doesn't take us away from our families, and most likely, things will come up during the day, and then we wouldn't get our run in. She was exactly right. 17 years later, the majority of our runs are still at 5 a.m. As we hit the pavement and got to know one another, I could not believe how much we had in common. We realized Jesse and Grady were not only the same age, but had the same birthday. She had family in Mercer Island, Washington, where my in-laws live, including her grandmother, who went to the same church as my in-laws. We were both teachers, but at the time stay-at-home moms, and we even shared the same middle name. As I was discovering the similarities, I knew it was a friend God handpicked for me. But what I later discovered was I guess we also look alike. Looked alike. People were constantly confusing us for one another. I will never forget we were both substitute teachers. We had been subbing at Fremont. Noni subbed a week prior for me, but prior to me for PE. When I went to pick up the same first grade class that she had the week before, the teacher said, Mrs. Nickel will be your PE teacher today. All of a sudden, a little boy raised his hand and he said, but I know your real name. <laughs> it's Mrs. Bambi. <laughs> I could never convince him otherwise. <laughs> the same thing happened with Jesse and Lacey when they were little girls. I will never forget Jesse telling me, Mom, someone thought I was lazy again today. It's too hard to explain, so I'm just going to pretend I'm lazy. <laughs> Though Noni and I's friendship, we became friends with the Vandenberg family. We shared many wonderful times together as families, but there were some challenges too. 
Jessie was a very strong little girl. Noni told me one day, I hope you don't mind, but I had to let her know who the boss was. <laughs> Grady was also Jessie's first friend in Lakeview. She only wanted to play with him and the boys. But by second grade, he had had enough of her, and we needed to encourage her to hang out with girls. <laughs> Brennan is how we've spent most of our time together. The cold mornings were brutal. I really just wanted to stay in my warm bed. But with Nomi, that was not an option. She would always tell us, in Alaska, they run a negative 10 degrees. We could do this. As Noni and I put in the miles, we share our lives with each other. Being a little older than me and having kids first, she taught me how important it was to be a wife and a mother. She would always say, Donna, that's our first job. We can always find time to teach later. She also taught me to let go of the little things. I'm still working on that one. <laughs> As our children grew up, she was right. It was time for us to get back in the classroom. We were excited about teaching again and loved discussing how much potential each student had and loved watching them learn. Those of you that have taught with Noni, you know how passionate she is about teaching math. She lit up every time she talked about it. I remember her telling me, when I get older, if I lose my passion for teaching and I get cranky with the kids, will you please tell me to retire? It's not fair to our students. But that was Noni, always thinking about others. As we put in more miles, either on the pavement or the trails, we discussed the friend we had in Jesus. We would talk about Bible stories, people we listened to on the radio that encouraged us in our faith, and how amazing it was to watch God work in our lives and those around us. Spending 17 years with my dear friend, I have so many memories I could share with you, words of advice she's given me, and just how real of a friend she was. But for the sake of time, we need to move on. Today, we cannot answer the hard question of why our precious friend has been taken away from us at such a young age. We have to hold on to what she's taught us in the years we've known her. She has touched each one of us with that incredible smile, encouraged us in some way, or pushed some of us physically to a place we didn't know we could go. We will all miss Noni tremendously because she is the definition of a wonderful wife, mother, grandmother, daughter, sister, colleague, and friend. But this is not goodbye. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I will see my friend again in heaven. These words brought comfort when my mom passed away. This is a promise that God has promised us, eternal life, 1 John 2, 25. The promise of eternal life comes straight from God. Those who receive Jesus in their heart do not exist, do not stop their existence when they stop breathing. Their last breath on earth is merely a precursor of life into eternity with Jesus. Today we miss them, but in eternity we will be reunited. Until we get again, simply trust in his unfailing promise. Noni's brother also had something to do. I'm Mark. I'm uh, Noni's oldest brother. Uh, probably not unlike uh, many of you. I, uh, I really wish I wasn't here today. Uh, my brothers and sisters. Also, should be it's our baby sister, the youngest of all us, a mom and dad, same thing. Uh, but yeah, this has been so recent that this has uh, happened that frankly it's very difficult uh, to process. But I'm very happy to be here to memorialize, to celebrate Tony's life. I know. Having been at funerals with Tony, that long ago she would have been a blubbering mess if she was sitting out there. We've, uh, I've watched her, she's so, uh, you know, we think about her and we know she's a joyful uh, life in everybody's life. It's so emotional, so that little things that we can get. And uh, so for those that are dry, out there right now, if you like to uh, you have a sat by a A couple of early memories, many people from Lakeview maybe didn't know Noni as a, as a child or a kid. So I'm seven years older than she, and uh, so I was around most of her life. 
and I had a, a number of uh, occasions to see her work for magic on a bunch of different groups. She was a very much in the neighborhood as a, as a kid. She had always had a lot of friends around. Obviously, that happened uh, through through the rest of her life. But it was right from the get go. She was that way. Uh, uh, specifically, I know I appreciated that gift she had. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, she would go to some of the games in the gym and hang out with the cheerleaders and do the pom poms. I mean, she was eight, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And she do the pom poms, cheer, there, you can imagine, don't you? Cheer and be happy and smile and all that. Well, the cheerleaders loved that. And as it turns out, I was sort of, I sort of thought that was cool, that the cheerleaders liked that because they didn't spend some time telling me what a cool sister I had. <laughs> we had a nice arrangement going like there. <laughs> About 30 years ago, uh, she introduced us to a guy named Dave Raymond Bird. And uh, so here we are. Uh, we meet this skinny, mulleted, lace <laughs> guy from some place called Lakeview that we uh, really have never heard of. Some of that stuff has changed since then. <laughs> Billy Cyrus went out of paper. <laughs> um, it didn't take us long before we saw in Dave what no one saw in Dave. We felt it wasn't done. Uh, the two really distinct areas where, where he moved my family was the adoration that my kids had for him. He was the most fun. He would come up with Games, he would. We had some of the, our most precious pictures of my kids are Dave and a half. They're just little, you know, first or second grade. And uh, he's in, they're, they're kind of in his arms, and Dave is napping them. Nap had turned into a bird. And uh, so he was busy napping them, and it, it was just fantastic. Uh, they also uh, admired his. His logo on his golf ball. When we'd go golfing, he always had a, a number of stripes on his golf ball. And uh, they said, Well, you know, where did they get that great logo on a golf ball? And I had to wait a long time before I told him that those were rain balls. <laughs> so, anyway, so he, he had me when he had my kids. He had me when he had no idea, and it was clear from the get go that these guys were meant to be. Nomi was never complete if Dave wasn't around. I just can't tell you how many times we would, we would be around. If he, if he wasn't around, we'd be talking, and, and she'd say, I'll ask Dave. Dave will know. Uh, I'll run that by him. He's, you know, he'll make that. Who uh, I find out though, and I know this is true also, that she had her own anchor position in the in the Vandenberg household. So no shrinking violet, as I think was mentioned earlier, but uh, uh, she was she was absolutely devoted and hopelessly in love with Dave. She was excellent at our family, the siblings, we have four kids so in, in, in the family, so we, we would get together at holidays and uh, sometimes just for special get together. And we would just have the greatest time. We kind of spread out after high school, but we would get together at least a couple times a year and go on and on and on about who knows what. My brother Dave is a very loud, boisterous, funny guy. My sister Anne is just a just a crack up. Right? <laughs> she'll make you she'll make you laugh. I tell her about stupid jokes, and nobody would just be crying with laughter at these things. And they go on and on and on and on uh, to the point where we probably should have gone to bed a long time ago, but didn't. Uh, Recently, uh, we had in common the joy of grandparenting. So we, we uh, constantly try to outgrandparent each other, showing who had the most 
pictures. Whose grandkid was doing the most smart thing? Uh, and, and so, uh, again, we, she was so joyful in what she perceived rightly as my joy and being a grandfather and, and just love with the grandkids that she was just right there with me. And she, wow, she, she had, you know, the only way she could just know when she saw the picture. And yeah, so genuine. Uh, uh, truly amazing. The last uh, kind of sibling meeting that we had, uh, where we got together, was just a month ago or so, up uh, in Washington State, and we spent some time up there. And I'll, you know, I certainly at the time I had no idea that it would be the last time the four of us would get together uh, as a group. Uh, but I, I remember taking away from that. Session. Uh, Noni, uh, we had a paddleboard, you're on the water, and we got a paddleboard, and you know, nobody's forced to go. I don't think she'd ever even seen a paddleboard unless it's been on one. And so, uh, sure enough, she got on one. I'm thinking, man, she's got this. You know, feet hurt and stuff like that. She was a trooper, like you heard from the running club, and she pushed herself. And she said, I'm, I'm going to do that. And she got on that paddleboard and she zoomed around the bay and uh, was quite a, an inspiration to all of us. Uh, well, kind of a downside to that last one was we uh, were sitting around the campfire telling stories and having s'mores and stuff like that. We tried to kill Dave with a uh, with a poisonous s'more. But you know, after we about that, we can't have to One of my favorite sayings, in, in, just in life in general, and sometimes in, in work and business, is uh, it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. It seems to, you know, if that's a philosophy, it seems to work in a lot of different situations. Make something better. Don't just write them down. Those sorts of things. Noni was the personification of that saying. Uh, three nights ago, I came home uh, from a business trip, walked in the door, and I got the, the dog love for my 15 seconds, and, but I noticed my wife, uh, Jan, had a strange look on her face. She told me about Noni, and I, I know we just hugged for a long time and said, no, 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 not Noni. Um, I felt like I'd been hit the, in the stomach. I assume, for those of you that endure, this is the same kind of stuff to went through, and I thought about at that time, I forget, just out of him, rolling woozy and off balance. That uh, you know, that somebody had snuffed out, or a, a candle had been snuffed out, or a light, a light in the world had been snuffed out. I came down here a couple days ago, though, and I spent time with Dave, Brady, and Lacey. With great kids who everybody knows she's totally devoted to, and frankly, they've got, they've got the best attributes of both of their parents. And in the last couple of days, I'm getting more and more convinced as I process this that it's not that uh, that candle, that light is not snuffed out, that we will always have the memories, the experiences, the inspiration of Noni. Forever. I'm going to continue to work on that. I'll, I'll get there all the way. We love you, Noni. The last two letters I'll read. One was a uh, answer from the dead. Noni's name was chosen by our younger brother Dave, who had a different way to say John. <laughs> she demonstrated sparkling love to those in her presence. She provided an unselfish gift from her to all who wanted care and to those who did not. 
She challenged doubts with affection and treated negatives with her positives. She made love you an encompassing wholehearted being. Noni was God's loving gift to us, and we hold her dear. This next one's going to be tough. From Hale and Isaiah. Dear me, even though you won't be at our first birthday Sunday, we want you to know that we realized and felt your special love for us. Your excitement to see us and your kisses and hugs let us know that we were very special to you and that you cherish every minute of the time that we spend together. We loved your songs, your reading books to us, and your encouragement and excitement for us to jump, ball, stand, and walk, while at the same time not wanting to give us, give up holding us close. We love the elephants you made for us, even though they appear to be doing some sort of yoga. <laughs> Your idea of making us backpacks for our second birthday would have been neat, and we're glad you were planning ahead. We hear your sewing was getting better. So we may have even worn them in public. <laughs> your willingness to stand happy, to strand happy anywhere, and rush to hang out with us. When our mom called, will not be forgotten. It was great that you could always tell us apart and get our names right, even when Pappy gets it wrong every time. <laughs> we loved it when you fed us bottles, and we could feel the love of your days on us. We liked our first vegetarian meal that we ate that you made, even though it caused us to have severe blowouts. <laughs> <laughs> we know you never wanted to leave when it was time for us, or for us to go to bed, and the fact that you hang out with us a little past the time you wore out your welcome was pretty cool. <laughs> we saw your concern when we were sick, and loved your cuddles when we cried or were upset. We know that you were really excited about all the special times you hoped we'd have in the future. We will miss you in those future times and all the love you had to offer us. But we're glad we were able to bring some of the joy to each other's hearts that we did while we were all here together. But I said earlier that each of you is here because you love Noni. We also need to remember that just as we love Noni, God loved Noni as well. With a love that cannot end. That love is described in 1 Corinthians 13 in this way. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. We normally only hear about this particular passage at weddings and anniversaries and on Valentine's Day. But this passage was not meant to describe a special occasion kind of love. It described a way of living. A way of living out God's love for others. But this love is not just a feeling, but a series of choices made day after day with person after person. Being sitting with the family and listening to the stories, this is the message that I call the best described to me. She did nothing half her, but gave herself to whatever she happened to be involved in. She was enthusiastic and excited about people, but no one more than her kids and grandkids. 
she had been moved to Lakeview, and it was told that she they, she named uh, moved to Lakeview so she could be a stay-at-home mom and be there for her kids. Now it was only supposed to last for a couple of years till they went to school, but she seemed to find reason after reason to prolong that to continue to be available for the kids. And after she had grandchildren, they became the joy of her life. And she was constantly looking for things to do or to make for them. I heard stories and stories and stories about uh, her love. I ended up, uh, a poor Dave being uh, replaced in the, as first in the heart. Uh, he's telling me that uh, she would never go hunting with him. But uh, personally broke the kids hunting so they could uh, uh, make, the, make the kill. And she would eat uh, whatever it was they brought home. At least the taste of it. Um, he, he, he said, uh, if I kill something, it wouldn't make it to the wall. But if they did, it would get hung there. <laughs> that love is patient, and love is kind. That Noni was notorious for not giving up on people. That stubborn love that simply wouldn't give up. And there are some who would not have graduated without her stubborn, stubborn love helping them to succeed. That she had a gift for being able to see underneath the surface to the value of a person inside. That she believed that people were valuable even when they didn't believe in themselves. Now it does say that love doesn't boast, and there was one example where she was not perfect. Uh, and it was a story about a plague of mice that had invaded the house to the basement. And uh, that, she, that she started out not even knowing how to set a trap. Uh, but by the end of it, she was bragging that she had uh, killed 22 mice and, and had even gotten two of them with one trap. <laughs> So, yes, nobody is perfect. <laughs> love is true. And as her brother shared, she could make you feel good even when you were telling stupid jokes. And the stupider the better. And she laughed with that infectious laughter. That love is not easily angry. And I doesn't say when she was never angry, because she could be angry. Especially if someone that she cared about was being wronged in some way. And uh, I was told that she had that look, that it would be all smiles until it got serious and then the, the twist of the head a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, Mama Bear was coming out. <laughs> and I love the stories of problems being only adventures. They're getting stuck in a snowstorm or being broken down in a vehicle somewhere in the middle of nowhere was only an opportunity for another adventure. And that as long as everyone was together, it was simply an adventure that she'd enjoy sharing with everybody when she got back. That Tony was a living example of the kind of love that God has for each of you as described in the passage in Corinthians. Each of you love Noni, most likely because she loved you first. That's the way it works. Those who have come to love God say the same kind of thing, that God first loved them and gave his son Jesus for us. Noni believed this. And because of her belief and her faith in this, we can confidently believe that she is in heaven right now, waiting for us to be reunited again. That we honor the memory of one that we have loved when we remember the good qualities of their life. And knowing he had a lot of those good qualities. Stubborn love, never giving up, Pouring yourself into other people. Family. Friends. You can remember any of those qualities and become a better person. 
if you put them into practice in your life. So one thing that uh, hit me most was that being around and only made you want to be a better person. And that was a beautiful thing. And so my hope is that you remember the beauty and want to be better. A better person to you. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the beauty of the gift of love that your child Tony has given to us for just a little while. And we ask your blessing as we remember her, as we remember the gifts that you gave to her to give to us. Help us to appreciate the food. And we ask for that blessing as we do honor to you and honor to her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I ask Dan to come back up. I'm going to just shortly escort the family out. And I would ask that everyone remain seated as they leave and head down toward the cafeteria area. And after we're gone, we will be have, we have a couple of a journal books that uh, family kind of like to. If somebody would like to write something in those, kind of one of each into these uh, excerpts. And then after people are pretty much not here, we'll take them down to the cafeteria so you can be sure and leave a special note to the family and express your love. Uh, those of you that uh, didn't have an opportunity to sign the other book, uh, it'll be also also be done in the cafeteria, so you can sign it there. And then, uh, again, on on behalf of the family, uh, I want to thank you again so much for being here. Uh, but I, I, I had this opportunity at the last, uh, not too long ago, to have a little slight connection with the family, uh, the other grandparents, uh, to those twins that just walked out the door. Uh, my grandma happened to be my niece, so we're, we're kind of connected here. And uh, what a privilege it is to get acquainted with more of the family. Uh, the legend of the party. So with that, uh, thank you so much for being here. God bless each one. And I'll escort the family. Take the love. 